Hello everyone and welcome to episode 17 of Theatre Chat Live. I had to check what number it was then. We had 17, nearly 20. Who knew we would come this far from when we started doing these way back at the beginning of 2021. Um, we are finally here. Um, the time next week has come. Boris has confirmed it. Theatres will be able to open on the 17th of May, socially distanced. And isn't it just the most exciting time in the world? Um, let me know how you guys are feeling. Are you looking forward to it? Are you feeling a bit nervous? Um, if you've got any questions about reopening, let me know and um, I'll have a little see if I can answer those questions for you. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a crazy, mad, exciting time. Um, I'm going to be at the Mousetrap, which is opening on Monday, the first show to open. And we're going to be ta I'm going to be taking you along with me. So you I'll be doing all the Instagram and Facebook stories. And it will feel like we're all there together because I know that you probably want to be there too. Um, I'm also going to see a few other shows next week and we're gonna bring you to all of them basically. You're not gonna miss out on anything. You're gonna be right there in the action and it's gonna be good fun. I'm so excited and so buzzed to finally be back in those theatres and be back on stage. So today um, we have got a lovely show for you. Um, we had a little bit of a last minute cast change as you do in theatre. Um, so we're going to be speaking to Nadia and Graziano from Here Come the Boys and we're also going to be speaking to Francesca and Jordan from uh, Public Domain. Both are new shows to the West End um, which yeah is always super exciting especially it's always really nice to kind of see the older shows reopening in the classics that we know but seeing new theatre and dance out there is definitely definitely a joy of theatre I think just always having something new. Nine till six the long one tomorrow. Hello. 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 Hi Nadia how are you? Hi. Just are you, the are you guys joining from one account? Sorry let's not find the are right. Are you guys joining from one account or are you doing from? Yes. The yeah we're good. good. Is that okay? Yeah absolutely yeah. fine. Um, we'll just how are you? To get the better. No, it's literally live. Yeah, it's live. We're not going to from the studio. Okay. Yeah. This is real life, okay. guys. Perfect. Should be a better connection. Yeah. 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 And because perfect lighting as well. Yeah. Yes, yes, better. Awesome. How are you guys doing? Did you have a dress run today? No. No, we had a little bit of yes. So today from nine till now. Six. So six. Yeah. And how well, is the day? It's, a, it's amazing. It's full on. We just finished our uh, on section. Yeah. Uh, it's great. It's great. We're doing second act. We just started in the end of it, right before uh, we had to start the live, the finale one. And it's, it's really it's cool. It's really no? powerful. It's really yeah. powerful. It, the yeah, group the is girls really, are starting. Yeah, always. Uh, I mean, almost all the time. We are really a bunch of people all together. We are pushing a lot. Uh, it's really challenging. It's been a full week. This is our seventh week of rehearsal. Uh, let me tell you, we are so excited, so excited to well, let you see this. It's this their show. second week and I got it. I just came into rehearsals because I was isolating yes. because of all visa problem and COVID situation. So I have to pick up all of this and to catch up on the whole week. Absolutely. From, it was in the uh, end of the first week, yes. she jumped on and we literally throw all the choreographies, all the steps. You have been amazing. Literally, we didn't have even day off. We have done from no, Monday no. till Sunday. Today we started again. Uh, Monday we started again. Today is Tuesday. So it's been pretty full, but exciting because the group is so together. So literally, the day is going really quick. I bet. So, Nadia, you started kind of this week, and Graziana, you, it, was it last week that you started rehearsals? Yes. How much does the show kind of develop within that time? Well, a lot. We're almost there. We're almost. We we're finishing. Close. Yeah, few more, few more sections in the second act, and we're almost done. Yeah, and then we're running, run, running the, run show. the show yeah. as much as we can. 
Absolutely. And of course, you guys are choreographers yourself, um, but you have your own choreographer on this show, um, Gareth. How is that working with him? And is it kind of quite collaborative or do you kind of just know, get told what you're doing and do that? No. Actually, he's amazing because he makes you feel comfortable. So he makes the choreography, but also maybe he tells you like, you go for eight here, make some tricks, some things. So then you do it by yourself with your partner and then he check it. If it's fine, we go ahead. That's why it's been so incredible this week to find a way, literally click on since the first day so we found a way to put ourselves, our our stuff, and he puts obviously all the choreography. So literally, it's going really well. Yeah, it's great. It's very challenging. Yeah, it is. I'm I'm a Latin and ballroom dancer, so but you're gonna see everything because we have also different styles. You have Kareem doing his little thing. Oh my we God, have yes. some yeah some amazing guys who are doing like very street and break dance and keep like so incredible cool. things. So it's, it's a great mix of amazing people, amazing talents, and it's just, uh, it's an honor to be on stage with them. It's amazing, because we are learning from them, they're learning from us, so we're helping each other, amazing. Definitely. So the show um, opened in 2019 before um, with Elias, but it was a different cast. Um, how is it different from that, from 2019 to now? First of all, we are now in five. So before they were in three, now we go, now there's a main lady and we go, our four, we are challenging each other, but in a good way. We are got, like, we know that we're going to give our best each show. We are like, yeah, give me your best. So it's a nice challenge, but obviously in this way, make us feeling like, yes, we have something to push on every show, every style. We're going to do ballroom, salsa, rumba, swing section. Uh, bond section is gonna be pretty full. I think the audience, are, we are taking that, we'll see after the first show. Uh, we are really dancing to give, to have the feedback from the audience. So we are really excited to see what is gonna happen from the first show. Definitely, and I was gonna ask actually how, how you think it's gonna feel having an actual audience in front of you, because obviously it is a little bit different this year and we've had so much time about actually being in the room with audiences. How is that gonna be when you finally step out on the screen? I think it's gonna be very emotional. So yeah. like for all of us, as we are speaking now already and thinking about the opening night, it's gonna be very emotional to finally have audience there and to dance for people because you know, we used to perform in front of the audience and then it was just taken away from us. You Before you would never thought of it, but then in a second, it just, that was it. And that's why we, we love what we do, but yeah. we love to do it for someone. And the energy of the audience, the feedback, it's from where we feed ourselves. So it's gonna be, with the audience, it's gonna be even better than for last year in front Absolutely. of all the cameras and everything. So very emotional, very exciting. Uh, and yeah. it's gonna be soon. So it's literally. The it's, film. Yeah. So it's the key, I think, the way of giving and receiving from the audience. Especially it's been it's been a tough period for all of us. For us as a dancer performer. Let's change the hat. Okay. Beautiful. And <laughs> That works, that's better. Uh, for the people that have been struggling at home. So have the people in front of us, we are dancing, it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. Joy, pure joy. And can you tell me a little bit about the music in the show? Because what I've seen so far it looks pretty upbeat. It's very upbeat. It's a lot of amazing songs which everyone loves. And it's just we were just listening to yeah. the final mix. It's just the selection of the best songs you can imagine, party songs. So to be honest, I'm expecting just everyone being there Something. on their feet yes. and dancing with us. Uh, it's gonna be, yeah, like we were saying, the best party in town after yeah. all this. It's to be a party. Yeah. After all of this, for sure. Yeah, it sounds like it, Sean. I'm sure people in the crowd would be like, letting rip and just letting go. And that's yep. what you want, Absolutely. isn't it? I'm sure it's gonna be this way, yeah. Um, so, uh, how many numbers are there all together in terms of your dance? Oh, I, lo I love the counts. <laughs> uh, literally, after one week and a half, not yet, but a lot, because also we got each of us solos in each battle, group dance, uh, 
opening number is is full. It's gonna be really full. It's such a great um, mix in between the numbers. What I love about this show, it doesn't feel like you know you dance, then it stops, and then you dance again, and you stop and talk inside. So becomes very it it literally the flow of the show is it, so good and you get everything you get to hear us talking as well which is fine but the whole way how gareth created the the choreography and the idea and the structure of the show it's it's so amazing just going from one to another and there's literally like yeah we were talking on like a, a right right yeah <laughs> Sorry. Right, right. Right. Rock concert just with dancers. That's how it's gonna feel, I'm sure. It's uh, a great combination of routines yeah, and music and music just sounds even better once we have yeah. our choreography and we dance in it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um is there a um oh, what was I gonna ask you? Hang on one second. <laughs> I had a question in my head and then it's literally just done. Um I can't it's gone, but that's fine. I mean, that's don't a good question. Well, um, as long as people coming to watch us, that's fine. Come and have fun yeah. with us. <laughs> um, my, uh, my final question for you guys is, obviously after this past year, um, it's all been a bit bonkers and a bit crazy. And having shows reopen again can almost be a bit like a new start. What do you think and what would you like to see for the future of dance? Oh, mm, that's an interesting question. question. In terms of, can, can you be more, more specific in terms of... Oh, I think it's just to be honest, we cannot wait to get back to the normality in sense of not just having uh, social distancing performance, but just the normal ones, because it feels like a little bit in our industry, it's things are going too slow, you know, like somewhere else there are not as much uh, restrictions already yeah. when with <laughs> us we're still getting there we're struggling but, yeah, but it's but getting slow the process compared to other let's say things that are going really quick on normal you know but yeah. hopefully yeah. yes but hopefully it will get back to normality as soon as possible like in june and we can do our thing normally how we used to and then yeah well just to get back to how it was in a way and then just go forward. But I think after everything what happened, the way we're going to cherish the actually to be able to perform in front of the people, because you, before you would never thought someone would take Absolutely it away not. from you. When now it's like, I think for me, literally, I was always thinking this way, but just now even more, every time we get a chance to dance, you're gonna enjoy even so more. Much, even more, just even yeah. More. It's it's so, it's big. Yeah. Oh, so I'm the so... first show is gonna be for us. Like, oh, we're gonna be so nervous in a good way. We want we want to give our best. It's the first show, so and we're gonna. How, how Nadia was saying before, we're gonna enjoy even more because before for us was normal to have people in theater and comes to see us. Now we know how hard it is in this time, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for coming and chatting with me. All the best yes, with yes. opening. I'm so excited to come see it and just do a little dance away, all my troubles, yes. and see you guys. Thank you. Well, we'll thank see you, you soon. Us. We'll see you in the yeah. playroom, and we'll see everyone who was watching. Opening night is 25th of May, and we have 17 shows. Just 17. Just so 17, don't so miss, don't miss it. Make it up and come to see us, guys. Yes. Awesome. It'll be short, bit sweet. See you later. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Oh, amazing. Who has got tickets to go and see Here Comes the Boys? I am so excited. I'm, I've never really been a dancer. I'm not going to lie. Um, I... Was, dancing's not my forte. Um, I used to do maybe a bit of contemporary dance, but any other dancing, I often just kind of watch Strictly and I'm just amazed by everything they do. And then whenever I go and see a dance show as well, I just, it is, I think it's that thing of, they can do these things with their bodies that, you know, not any normal person can do. Um, and going to see a performance, especially after kind of doing dance, dancing lessons and stuff like that, you kind of learn what goes into it and how, you know, how hard it is to really be focused and on the beat all the time. 
Um, so Here Come the Boys is coming to London Palladium um, this this month. Um, you can find out some more information on it um, at the end of this live. I'll pop the Instagram handle below and you can have a look at getting your tickets. Um, what have you all been saying? So James says, I have to say Nadia is my favourite Strictly Professional. I hope she gets a partner this year. Yes, absolutely. Um, we've got Dives Mike says, love you guys. Um, Helen says, yes, we struggle with no shows. So looking forward to seeing shows again. It's been quite the year, hasn't it? But how awesome is it going to be when we finally get to that curtain call and see those audiences and see actors in the audience communicating? That's what I'm most excited about, actually. Um, Luke says, great, lovely people. Um, uh, and Helen said yes and see your fans as well and Jenna says it will be an emotional first night I think I think there'll be a lot of tears I think the whole end of May in theatre land is just going to be people having one big sigh of relief and really kind of taking it in because we've missed it haven't we so let's have a look and see if our next guests are available. Um, so we're going to be speaking to Francesca and Jordan. They are going to be in Public Domain, which is coming to the Vaudeville Theatre. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Hello. Hi. Very good. Had a full day of rehearsal. Um, we're bit knackered, but in a good way. Yeah, good tired. <laughs> That's good. We like to hear that. I just want to ask one question. Jordan, is it Jordan Paul or Jordan? What do you Oh, Jordan. 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 I'm Jordan Paul Clark because, like, all the cool composers have triple names, right? Sure. Yeah. 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 Why not? Yeah. I love that. When you kind of go into acting, you get to kind of cho choose your equity name, don't you? And you can kind of be called whatever. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Go for free names, why not? Um, so, thanks for joining. First of all, can you both just tell me a little bit about yourselves? Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Francesca Forrestal. Uh, I am a writer, uh, performer, uh, started off in theatre land as a drag king. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's basically uh, a person with uh, who's not a man dressing as a man most of the time. Uh, like the almost like the opposite of a drag queen. Uh, and then got into writing, started writing with this one. Uh, now can only write with this one oh, because yeah. it turns out he's very talented. <laughs> We have exclusives. Um, yeah, we do. <laughs> and, um, he is my theatre husband, and uh, we write we write silly musicals and whatnot, don't we? Yeah, um, and I'm Jordan, and I'm a composer, musical director, uh, improviser, and I, I I kind of just do a lot of musical theatre in lots of different ways. I do like arrangements and conduct shows. Sometimes I improvise with um, a showstopper, the improvised musical. Uh, and sometimes I work with Mischief Theatre as well on their improv stuff. And I met this one through the Drag King stuff. And as Cheska's just said, we spent the last couple of years writing musicals together. Awesome. My next question was going to be, how did you guys start working with each other? So you've kind of already answered it there. There's uh, more. There's more. I mean, no, I was, I was, I would needed a piano person. What do you call them? Person who improvises Pian musicals. Piano. <laughs> Uh, he was like, oh, oh, I want to come play for the, the dr weird drag show. I was so excited when I heard there was an improvised drag show. I was like, I've got to play piano for that. That Dude, sounds amazing. I thought Mr. Like, I play all of the like West End all piano stuff. And I didn't know any of this. And so he sat there and kind of in my most uh, official kind of slightly anal way, tried to explain to him how to improvise a musical. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, was that, was that was very kind. <laughs> But literally, it was a really nice way to meet. We just sort of spoke about how we might do the show. And within 20 minutes of meeting, we were on stage together, <laughs> making up a musical to a packed house. And, you know, that was kind of the, the genesis of what we do now, I suppose. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm really interested in that kind of improvising a musical. How, what tips can you give us for someone who might want to do that? I think not to judge yourself. So when I started, when I started improvising, uh it's uh it's, it's a very male uh dominated um thing World. yeah we started um and uh my key thing was like oh my god how do i be funny how do i like be witty and intelligent and like do the best amazing thing and it meant that i choked up on stage all the time that she could not speak 
for heck. And then uh, my mate was like, just chill out and be yourself. I stopped judging what I said more. And, you know, I'm a fumbly person. Often, this is why I'm a writer, because I write stuff down, because that makes sense. When I say stuff, it doesn't. And just embrace that. And actually, embracing your mistakes means you make some really fun, cool stuff. This is just life advice. Yeah. This is good <laughs> in love You're, advice. You know, mistakes. Yeah, good I mean, improv advice is just good life advice. Yeah. I think for me, I love improvising people so much. And there's so much to it. Obviously, you know, the best improvisers spend years of their lives training in improv. The thing that you want to do if you're improvising musicals is just know musicals as well as you can. Yeah. Listen yeah. to all Damn, the musicals yes. in the world and we'll know them pretty quickly. That's what a what, shame. You, know, you have to do. listen to loads of musicals. <laughs> that's true I think when I was younger I definitely was one of those people that was like oh I don't really go to shows I'm normally just in them which I, you know <laughs> I see where I was getting from but actually when I started like watching them and seeing them it's like oh hang on there's all these different ideas and yeah. learning from other people you have to go see shows if you want to be in the industry because that's where it's happening right yeah 100%. I think it's I think it's very similar with writing as well like quite often I um I get because I'm also a screenwriter and so like ch churning out lots of ideas is kind of my vibe. Um, yeah, she writes movies. She's cool. Oh, hello. Mm -hmm. nice. I, I'm um, <laughs> um, and like you often get this thing like tunnel vision of like I need to like be writing. I don't have time to read. I have to be writing right now. Or, like I don't have time to be watching things. I need to be writing. And then you realise that you've got no ideas and you're like And then Wait. You, take, you take ten minutes to just yeah. like listen to an album <laughs> or you go and see a show if you can or watch a movie and it's like, oh all the ideas have come to me. And now. suddenly you're feeling artistic depression inspired yeah. and you're like, oh my God, I don't want to make anything like that, but that one thing gave me an idea about this and da, 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 and it's just spirals and fun. Amazing. So let's talk a little bit about public domain. Um, did that idea from public domain come from improvisation or was that something else that you guys thought together? So that show began, there was a, a night at the Southwark Playhouse, which Adam Lenson was doing called Newsfeed, where writers were asked to submit something based on the news that week. Yeah. And we were in the middle of a lot of improv and writing another show. And we, were, we were in Chichester, weren't we? Yes, we were in Chichester, workshopping another one of our musicals with the students down there. And we were like, we really want to do something to take our minds off of all this, so let's go do this newsfeed thing. And we wrote this song. Do you want to talk about the Katie Porter thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, so basically, there's this video that I watched on Twitter of Katie Porter totally rinsing Mark Zuckerberg. Like, he's in Congress. <laughs> she did no shit. She's like this badass woman just being like, sorry, um reclaiming my time um can i ask you this another question which like you're definitely not going to be able to answer yeah and bumbling weirdo and we were like this is so yes jordan plays bumbling naturally. weirdo, bumbling naturally. weirdo is my i play all of them <laughs> um and um yeah so she it's like this really like dramatic moment and we both watched it and we're like this feels like theatre. We were like, we have to turn this into a song in the same way that like Hamilton takes scenes in court and turns them into this like electric mm. musical film. Yeah. yeah. The legend of modern day, something that happened this week, right? To something that we all relate to. So we took it and we had like a day to turn it around and we turn it into this, it's like not quite a rap battle like Hamilton, but it's like this modern techno battle in court. And it just went down really, really well at this gig. It went down so well. Everyone just loved it. And it was quite, it was cool. It went, you know, it was a good reaction considering it was just a spark of an idea. And <laughs> Adam comes up to us afterwards and goes, so where's the where's rest, the of, the rest of the show? Guys? And we were like, mm. <laughs> we were like write, write me that musical and I'll put it on. And we were like, okay, right, we'll fine. Do it. Uh, so we did. And what <laughs> I think the show does uh, that kind of makes it not really sound like anything else on the West End at the moment, I guess, is that it, is verbatim which means it's only using words that we found on the internet oh yeah that's but... the song with katie porter we literally took the words that she said in congress and that mark zuckerberg said in congress and turned that into a song yeah that was mm -hmm. but much like uh the internet kind of takes uh videos and then songifies them and makes them sound like modern music we wanted these words to sound like something that billy eilish or little mix could have Mate, basically. Yeah. Like, what would the internet sound like if it was a teenager's Spotify playlist yes. in their bedroom? Yeah. yeah. So it's the internet, but 
your favorite Spotify playlist. There's lots of bops. Uh, yeah. And it's trying to basically like bring that like slightly uh, edgy, like fun, quirky humor that the you find has. you find yeah. when people just start making content. Like think about like what happens on TikTok all the time, where you get duets where people are constantly querying content and flipping it around and making it kind of abstracted and abstracted. Like that's kind of where we wanted to go with it. So it feels like you're in the internet. Yeah, which was quite a leap from you know. I know you asked about how did it start. That first song was like, oh, let's tackle this bit of uh, legalities, right, being discussed about the internet. Suddenly we were looking at all of the internet. And that's what the show is doing. Yeah. Yeah. So this show is very much up my alley um, because I'm a social media coordinator. So basically social media is my life. Um, don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, still learning. Um, mostly a good thing. Uh, and I love the idea that it is kind of a, is it a further Tim? I can't ever say it. Further Yeah, yeah. It means word for word. There you go. Um, with kind of YouTubers and influencers and stuff like that. Um, was there anything when you were kind of writing it and listening to people talking about it that you found particularly shocking? So I guess that's the main like thing that brought us into write it is the fact that when you sift through the internet, which Jessica spent hours and hours doing, mm -hmm. when you do that, when you watch influencer after influencer or you watch content after content after content, you start to see quite a lot of recurring themes. Mm -hmm. you know? It's really strange. When you watch one person, you're like, hmm, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a weird thing to say. And then they all say, <laughs> like, and what, what we're <laughs> the weirdness we're talking about is kind of the way that people uh, have to sell their authenticity online, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And I guess one of the shocking things that we look at in the show is like, what happens to you as a human being when you are expected, you're expected to put your authentic self online every day? And when that turns into your income or your, your life or your career, like what does that do to you as a person? Whether you are a teenage influencer making videos in your bedroom or whether you're Mark Zuckerberg and his wife Priscilla Chan also having to try and portray their authentic selves. So, you know, have to, mm -hmm. having to sell their authentic selves. What does that do to us as people? That's kind of the shocking thing we found. The most shocking thing uh, that I stumbled across, which we nearly put in the show and then realized it didn't need really well we did it with other things which will have to come to the show to see do, 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 do. uh was uh i went down a youtube poll of uh people posting their panic attacks online mm. that me up yeah. in a yeah. way am i allowed to say am i allowed to swear we can beep it out. I'll beep, I'll beep out swearing. I will beep it out afterwards. It's fine. YouTube yeah. doesn't like swearing, but it's fine. We'll beep it out. Um, uh, yeah, no, there's going down this route of authenticity. You know, there are lots of people who say, you know, like, you've got to give your full, true self. You've got to blog every moment. Like, you know, when you're feeling down, you've got to blog that. When you're feeling up, you've got to blog that, blah, blah, blah. And there's some people who go, hi, guys. So it's two in the morning and I'm having a panic attack and I can't breathe and I want to die. And I just, die, and to share I just need to share it with you so that you can see what this is like. And we're I not, feel so alone. It's important to say that we're not, with this show, we're not taking that and going, isn't this crazy? Or isn't this ridiculous? Or isn't that such no. an odd thing to do? What we're doing is we're taking that and going, how do we all feel about the fact that we have to try and communicate in this way? Or, or how do we feel about the fact that someone's career choice or success you know, as a YouTuber has led them to a point where they have to, you know, let people in, in that way, even mm. though these are strangers online, et cetera, et cetera, you know? Yeah. yeah. We, we've explored that. The show's like definitely gone down other alleys with that, but it's one of the things we've discovered. Oh, yeah, that sounds so interesting. And I guess that's what it is, isn't it? And I guess sometimes theatre is much of an exploration and uh, making people ask questions and, you know, mm -hmm. make them ask questions that maybe they don't think they normally would if they're just kind of looking at socials and not really paying attention to what they're watching. Yeah, mm. we've definitely, definitely made, like this show is not, oh my goodness, social media is so bad, get off of it, the musical. It's not, yeah. It's yeah. what we've tried to do is just give you a landscape. We, the main thing we try and do is say, hey, buy a ticket to our show and you're buying a ticket to the internet in the theatre, right? This show is going to have, it's got like over a thousand sound cues and visual cues. There's projections and video work over the whole thing. And it's going to feel like you've taken a seat on a website, right? That's the idea. You've literally come into the theatre and you're in the internet. You're submerged in the internet. And what we've tried to do is give you a landscape that is truthful 
about the way we engage with the internet and that comes with a lot of really difficult stuff mm -hmm. and baggage and and you know issues about privacy and uh kind of fake lives online but it also comes with you know we've just had a year where the only way we've been able to communicate with our loved ones has been through the internet the show also explores that and what it is to communicate in that way through the internet you know we've got we, we explore the whole landscape of the the good and the bad in a very short space of time. In an hour, in a musical. <laughs> Perfect. That's all you need, isn't it? An hour exactly. musical just to explain life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all it takes. So good. Um, how does it feel opening at the Vaudeville and being back in the West End amongst the time that all the other shows are coming back? It's so exciting. It's mad exciting. Like, it, as in, it, I'm not going to lie to you, has not felt real. No, it hasn't until the announcement. Yeah, yes, I can see that. Were genuinely open. I was like, nah. no, because like you know, we live in a time where it's really hard to take anything for granted. But I think the like we're on our second day of rehearsals today, and as these days are going, it's just like oh, it gets more and more real, you know, with every passing hour of rehearsal, yeah. and it it does just feel awesome. You know? Yeah, I know. It's it's also just the feel the reason I perform is that mm -hmm. with an audience. Yeah. It's the reason why I love doing drag as much as I love doing, you know, musical theatre as much as I love, like, live performance is such a fizzy feeling when you get that chemistry and that moment where you make people laugh and then you're like, oh, you found that funny, did you? Let me, what else can I do to make you? <laughs> and then I'm just, the idea that, like, there's going to be people yeah. responding. So again, about it's the, so exciting. Yeah, with this show, we've always wanted to bring the internet into the space to be like, hey, what happens when you strip that computer screen away? What happens when you strip that phone screen away? And we're really there in the room, you know, with everything you'd normally see on the internet. And we didn't get to do that in January when we did the yeah. live stream from the Southwark Playhouse. It mm -hmm. was awesome and like amazing to explore the show for live streaming, you know? And we had this production that was literally designed for you guys at home mm -hmm. to live stream. And that was really cool and really brought some colors out of the show. Now we get to put it in front of real people and, you know, see what that does. And I'm so excited to just actually sing these songs for an audience as well. You know, yeah. I'm so excited to have real people there in the audience. It's going to be amazing. For sure. It'll be really interesting to see how you find doing the show, like obviously digitally and doing it in person. Has there been anything that's kind of changed since you've done that? Um, yeah. Yeah, the main thing that's changed is like going from a version where we as two performers, it being a two-hander, right? We've got a lot of stuff to do in the show and the cameras were cut off for like half a second. We would have to like throw a chair in this direction, uh, move, a, move a block and then move halfway across this studio space. Whereas this time we get to really play around with the fact that we're really there in live time and uh, we can play with when, um, when we don't have to move and when we don't have to be in front of cameras and stuff like that. So that's a really new thing for us. We get to look at each other. That's the thing. We do. So in the, in the way that you live stream, that like not, not meaning to like, but like you have to have in-ears because obviously you can't make any sound in the room or did you get sound pollution and like you've got to do things to certain cameras at certain points so there is no real cross arch or like audience space there's lots of different cameras around you and it's kind of like performing in the round it's a bit like a tv studio yeah style, Massively, yes so like for the entire show and all the rehearsal period of the southwark jordan and i didn't really look at each other no. we were sort of on the opposite ends of the room and it was really isolating and you kind of felt like because your your ears are plugged with in-ears that stop you hearing anything except mm -hmm. the voice of the director and the gods kind of thing and so you end up just feeling like a kind of pawn in a machine whereas this is lovely yeah. this is delightful it's, it's this been, is what i like doing lots of talking and laughing and being it's, in it's the, the same, same <laughs> relief that everyone's going through in rehearsals now of like oh we can actually get into a room actually pull you know we've got our rehearsal bottles and we've got chairs in a rehearsal room and we're actually just devising things again as a team you know and that feels mm -hmm. really awesome and connected as well that feels really cool in terms of the material though the show itself at the minute it, it's very much the show we had in january but responding to a few things that have happened since you know so yeah. there will be nods to some things that have happened in the news in the last few weeks and you know we've still got two weeks to go if something big happens in the tech world or in the world of social media or connection online in the next two weeks who knows you might have another song in the show yeah mm. it goes moves so quickly doesn't it and i guess the magic of live theater is that 
you it can kind of change and you have a bit more freedom and you can play a little bit especially when things might you know change and every show is kind of different um yeah that sounds really exciting for sure um and i also want to know how important it is for a new musical to be in the west end oh man that's something we could talk for days about. oh mate you have no idea so like so uh adam Nettin, who is our director slash producer slash like you know has been working with us since the conception of this product project um is always you know like he, he talks very eloquently about why all the different reasons why new musical theater is so great uh, but for us it's like a real proof that like I don't know. The world is slightly changing. I think, like Nika Burns, is really supporting this whole, so many new. The whole Rising Stars Festival is such an amazing beacon of like it's shining a light on so many of these amazing young producers, and we just feel so grateful to be part of that with this show that's only been in the world for about a year. You know, it. We love the classics. We absolutely love them, and we love all the big shows that have come out in the last five years, ten years. It's the last five so, years. Yeah, it's just so <laughs> very special to be doing a show. That you about the year we've just been through that we finished the last song on like you know eight weeks ago before we did it you know etc yeah caveat not a covid musical we don't talk about covid we, no one wants to see covid right now we don't no. like that. yeah that's good to know i think that is a really good point actually which made of like it's res- it's responsive it's current it's now like musical theater does not have to be uh museum pieces it doesn't have to be something which is like yeah, which I think, like, you know, yeah. to see something which was written in the last year mm-hmm. on a stage in the West End proves that it can rival television in its kind of responsiveness to the moment and feel really on the pulse, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like that hasn't happened a lot in musicals, right? It's musicals are big and expensive and it's really hard to get off the ground. <laughs> and so it just feels really, we feel so lucky to have had this chance taken on the piece we've made, you know, by our Thank producers and Nymax <laughs> in the theatre, you know, to have it on this stage, literally on the strand in the West End is just like, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. Yeah. I told my mum. She, yeah. She's, yeah. And obviously it just feels very important because new work is vital. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. musicals can so often end up uh, staying on for a very long time and some of them are incredible for that. Uh, we're big fans of new writing in all mediums and it's just nice to see that start to shift in musicals. Yeah, definitely. I feel like we could definitely fill the whole of London with new shows and new writing for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, yes, I am, as I said, I'm super excited to see Public Domain because I feel like it's very much my thing. Um, we can obviously follow you on Instagram. Um, and I feel like there's been some um, videos uploaded of the songs and stuff, hasn't there? So if anybody would like a little sneaky peek, um, yeah, they can just have a look. At Public Domain Show, um, you'll find some videos on there. But also, uh, I think this might be the first time we've said this to anyone. Oh, but my God. The, uh, exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> the EP should be getting released on, what's the date? The EP's getting released. Is it 21st? 21st. The Monday of the week we go up on the West End. And, and the then? EP will be released on all streaming platforms. So keep your eye out for that as well. You yeah. can stream it on Spotify and iTunes and all that all of the things you stream music on. Yeah. Uh, it'll be super good to just, yeah, go check out the music uh, and get buzzed about the show. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining and all the best on opening. Break your legs um, and enjoy. Thank you. Great, thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye. Uh, uh, Mags just said, oh, I missed it. Well, you know what? This is going to be saved to the Instagram grid and it will be on um, our YouTube as well. So if you did miss um, our chat today, then it will still be available because, you know, internet, the magical internet, you can look back at these things. Um, so thank you so much to everybody who has tuned in today. Um, it's so great. I say this every single week, uh, talking about actual theatres and actual shows that are going to be out there next week um which i just cannot wait for um i'm not going to be here next week because i'm going to be in the west end um 
uh, going to be seeing a show, but Frankie is going to be here and she's going to be speaking um, to some amazing guests. Uh, we will be posting them on our Instagram grid, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled. Um, I'm sure you're not going to want to miss those interviews. And yeah, I hope everyone has a wonderful week and gets to see some theatre. Um, and if not, I will see you in two weeks' time, but Frankie will see you next week. Thanks so much for joining. Bye. Thank you.